Understanding and deriving physical properties of the lava using multi remote sensing techniques and data sets. And yeah, thanks for coming for this presentation. And this is the outline for this presentation. So, this research background, introduction. So, we will have a brief overview a little bit for Holoron eruption. And this is the main objectives. I have like data during the eruption and then after the eruption. So, it's like conclusion, etc. have in here both of this, and I have a current progress and future works. So this is background. So the development of remote sensing for technological purpose, it's moving at so fast, and especially regarding to lava flow. And recent study have most often used the three sensors for the active and stagnant lava flow. There are infrared, both like shortwave and thermal, and radar, and optical, which is in visible term. And remote sensing via satellites and airborne also used to monitor eruption that either inaccessible or difficult to access. And this is the one of the research from Lombardo and New York in 2006 in Etna. And then this is me for deriving the morphological lava flow in Kravla. And here, these three common sensors that use in lava flow like infrared, and this is the physical properties that use uh, commonly derived from the remote sensing from these sensors. So from infrared, we can get the subpixel temperature, which is define the temperature of lava flow, and radiant flux, mass eruption rate, volume, and lava crust thickness. And this is mostly the reference for this. And this is radar. Mostly from radar, we can derive surface roughness, lava morphology, and also thickness. This is based on DM also, derived from radar. And from optical, or optical, this means like uh, below the infrared band, we can derive morphology, surface mineral, surface type, hydrothermal alteration, things, and etc. This is mostly the reference for this one. And here's the few facts about the eruption in, at Holorun. This is typical axial uh, rip basalt, and eruption temperature is around 1170 until 1190 degrees C. And fissure erupted two times before, and this is a finite from Bagdad Bunga volcanic system. And the duration of uh, the eruption around 180 days, uh, from the end of August until the end of February. <coughs> And lava was in place in the flat ground here, as you can see. The length is 17.8 kilometers. This is huge. 
relatively huge compared with the Lucky eruption, and the area covered 80, around 84 kilometers square, and average thickness of the lava is 17 meters, and maximum thickness is 62 meters, and bulk volume, we can get 1.4 cubic kilometers, and dense rock equivalent volume is like 1.1 until 1.2 cubic kilometer and upper discharge rate around 77 cubic meter per second and range from 40 until 30, 20 and SO2 mass is around 8 until 10 megatons. So here's the Halurum place in north of Pakhnayakurkit. So this main objective of this study is uh, to derive the physical properties of the lava from 2014 and 15. So we have the data during the eruption, which mostly covered during the eruption, and this is after the eruption finish. So let uh, both of these, they, they have uh, their own conclusion and discussion later. So we move to during the eruption here. So this is already published in a remote sensing journal uh, in early January this year. So this is, we'll talk about mostly about this paper. So a working of infrared bands during the eruption, we can see here in the red channel, in the 0 0.6 micrometer, we can see only plum here. If we go through further to near infrared, we can see clear the channel. And this is uh, from 6 September 2014. And this is if we go to 1.6 micrometer, we can see clearly the lava and of course in the thermal infrared you can see clearly even the this is a still warm surface is still detected this is not uh, exactly cool but it's like warm things so the specific objectives for this uh, study is quantify different thermal domains within the lava flow field then estimate the temperature of the hot component or subpixel within the lava flow and then estimate radiant flux, crust thickness, volume via infrared, and consider the effect of lava surface roughness using Hurst coefficient based on the radar data from Sentinel-1. This is the design method that we use, Landsat-8, but only we are using shortwave infrared and thermal infrared here, which is band 6 and band 10. And the acquisition is times is set following the availability and good quality of data. So the range of the time series is from September to February 2015. So we have a nine data sets for uh, Landsat, and then we have one Sentinel 1A data for surface roughness. So this is the radiance model for the. Uh, lava. This is the red one is the for active lava, and the blue one is the for crust. This is the, the lava that already cooled, but it exactly is still, still warm. So this is this point is like is the radiance detected from from the satellite, which is the, this is a band six. This is band seven. We didn't use this band seven because it's oversaturated in the lava. So. We move, uh, remove this, and also band 11, we don't use this because a lot of vertical stripe on the data. So we're only using bands 6 and band 10 here. This is clearly, you can see here, also this is band 6, and this is respond from band 10 during 6 September. You can see in the band 10 here, we can see clearly this is still a warm surface of the lava, but it's not detected in the band 6 which is clear here, this is cross, is still higher in the band 10, but in the band 6 is, is uh, a low, a low radiance. So the idea is to combine both of this, both of this uh, image. Oops, I think. Yeah, here uh, we do follow up the thermal eruption index called a yeah, cold thermal eruption index based on the short wave infrared and thermal infrared band to set up threshold for active lava domain, hot crust domain, and warm crust domain. 
which is we are using radiance in shortwave infrared and radiance in thermal infrared. This equation is based on empirical, so we try and error to see the threshold things. So it's not the derived from mathematical model, but this is pure empirical. So here, the result for thermal eruption index. So from here, we can see the active lava domain have a value more than 0 0.51, and hot crust in between 0 0.22 until 0 0.51 and one cross from 0 0.1 until 0 0.22, and less than 0 0.1, it's like dark, it's nothing happened, it's, there's no hot spots or anything. So TI in here described more than 0 0.1, it's like anomaly sign here. So here, uh, crap, this is for active lava domain, the range of temperature here, uh, sorry, the range, range of TI here, this is hot crust, warm cars and non volcanic type. So after we get the threshold that we set up the dual band solution which is uh, introduced by Dozier in 1981 <coughs> for a mixed pixel containing two distinct thermal, thermal component. So we assume this is uh, in real condition and this is from satellite which is uh, we are using Landsat like 30 meters by 30 meters in Landsat, we only detected one, one temperature here, but exactly we have a lot of components. Like, uh, this is uh, to be simplified, we only use uh, cooling component and hot component. Like in the, this is have uh, their own portion. So in here, radiant and shortwave infrared and radiance and thermal infrared. And this P is pixel portion, which is like covered how many fraction in the, in the image. So here we we want to know the uh, TH, which is the hot component temperature, by assuming TC here, the ground temperature in this study. We set TC using the lowest temperature detected in uh, thermal infrared for different thermal domains. So for TC 25C is like warm crust, TC 50C is hot crust and 85 C is uh, active lava. This is based on the brightness temperature in the thermal infrared. So this assumption is suitable in situation where different thermal domains, what active lava and crust is clear, clearly visible in the image, like like in the hollow root. So uh, we can solve this uh, TH by iterating on P until P in uh, shortwave infrared same as uh, P in thermal infrared. And then we can solve the pH here. The pH. So after we get the pH here, so this is mostly the result uh, from September to February. And in October, we have a little bit uh, cloud cover here, but I will show you later. We can go to the September 6 here. This is the temperature from September 6, and this is the pixel por portion that covered during the eruption. So maximum temperature here, you can see this is in the lava channels, it's around 1185C, and the lowest is 346C, which is mostly covered in the crust, is that already cool? And this is uh, the pixel portion, which means this is uh, the red one, mostly the hot component temperature covered more in this area. And here if we plot from hot component temperature to pixel portion, it's like uh, the higher the pixel, the higher the temperature, also the, uh, the lower the pixel portion here. And this also, uh, in theory, the temperature and TI should be also a higher temperature, higher the TI, but we have also here higher temperature but low TI. This is mostly because of uh, cloud, uh, uh, cloud cover here. We have some cloud cover. Sorry, it's not cloud cover, it's like yeah, ash, covering by ash here. Yeah, plume in here. So that's why we have 
this one, this peak here. This is, if we classify here, you can see the subtrend X, which means it's like active lava flow, and subtrend Y is like uh, still hot, hot crust, and this subtrend Z, this is, uh, is already cooling or warm. And we can see in December, 2nd of December 2014, we will uh, see in this tiny area because we have a, a ground truth here, ground truth temperature here. So here, this is uh, the coordinate, and we have the temperature here around 10, 96 degrees C, and pixel covering around 0.34% of the area, the hot component. So the lava covering in this area is around 3.05 meters square meter because the Landsat area is 900 meters square per pixel. So this one multiplied by this and this we got here and then here the exact time, exact depth from this area here we have this temperature maximum 1047C in this area and then it's covering 4.52 square meter here. So what happens if we vary the TC value in, and at that uh, moment, if we vary in, uh, TC value, if we increase TC, so the temperature will increase also. If we decrease TC, the temperature will uh, decrease also, like in this active lava flow. If we put, for example, 90, this is will be no solution in, in the temperature. So we have to be careful also to decide the TC. So after we get the temperature, we can calculate radiant flux and crust thickness. This method based on Harris in 1997. So first we need to define the effective temperature, which is we got a hot component temperature here, and we got a cool component temperature here, and we will have a effective temperature. Then here, in radiant flux, we introduce H, which means Hertz coefficient that describes the roughness of the lava here, derived from the sentinel product, which is, will be described later. So this H will affect the, the calculation of radiant flux and convective flux also in here. And also, of course, conduction, because this conduction uh, based on the convective and radiant. So the crust thickness uh, derived from the this conduction things, we assume the radiant and convection same like uh, as conduction. So the, we can move uh, the thickness here. We have delta T and then we can derive the, the thickness, crust thickness of the lava from here. So how to derive the Hertz coefficient here? So according to uh, radar theory, if we have low backscattering or a low signal in radar, which means that it's smooth surface, it's, there, there's no signal back to the satellite. So if we have moderate backscatter, it means like moderately rough and high backscatter is rough surface, and very high backscatter is very rough surface, which is we can see here. The white is a very high uh, backscatter and the low, the black is the very low backscatter. If we make a transect between here, 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 we can see clear the very rough surface is very rough signal here. So from here, based on this, we derive the Hertz coefficient. Uh, we use RNS method based on Martinez et al. and Block. This is uh, for derive the surface roughness of material thing. And the R is the amplitude of here, the maximum amplitude of the signal. And S is the standard deviation of the signal. And we can derive the H accent from here, which is uh, the tau, this is the transect, the length of transect of <coughs> the signal. So this is what we got. So we normalize the H accent, we got H accent here. Oh, sorry, this is kind. Of, no, this is the H accent. 
this is flex switch this is edge accent so we multiply by 0 0.5 this one because according to research by Separ et al in 2001 they have a ground measurement in of the roughness of the lava using the measuring tape something like that and uh, the geological surface has a strong tendency to cluster on around edge 0 0.5 so we normalize here multiply by 0 0.5 we get H 0 0.1 or for the uh, rough surface which is this in thermal domain mostly dominated by warm crust and we got 0 0.35 is mostly dominated in hot crust and 0 0.44 this is in active lava which dominated like smooth surface yeah relatively smooth so this is the result for radiant flux that we got. So we have peak in 6th of September, and then we have another peak in, this is around October, around October, and then increase until the February 4th. But here, the maximum radiance that we could get here is 8 gigawatt. What it mean? Uh, it means this is, uh, Underestimated compared to other result because the other result could get uh, until 25 uh, gigawatt. For example, in Wright at all, they get around 20 gigawatt. But this is uh, uh, in the in term of the in term of the uh, signal here in the radiant flux is uh, it's same like in the field observation, which is this is dominated by. Uh, open channel flow, and then this is like breakout things. And but we can we can discuss about this later. And now we go to crust thickness. The thickness we get maximum is 15 meters at the edge here, 15 meters, and then the lowest part is two meters in the in the channel, mostly in the channel. So based on here, we can get the total volume based on the highest crust thickness here, which is uh, assume the uh, the area covered in the in the end of the eruption is 84 kilometers square, and in the initial eruption that we get the crust thickness maximum crust thickness is 15 meters, and we got like 1.26 kilometers square, which is uh, have good agreement with. The RI, the RI, the volume, and we can see also zoom in a little bit further here, which is we have ground truth here, or 15 ground truth here, but this is mostly from 3 until 4 September. Sorry, this is not 17. This is uh, 2014. Uh, 2014. So oh, if we plot here, this is based, the blue one based on the satellite. And the red one based on the measurement in, on 3 until 4 September. Mostly we have good agreement in the channel here. So it's like different uh, 50 centimeter until uh, 1 meters. But on the edge, we have some problem, especially here. Here. It's like overestimated here, which is uh, because of mostly because this is like temporal difference also could be temporal difference because this is from 6 September and then this is from 3 until 4 September so this uh, lava things is already uh, cooling and then the thick more thicker and yeah this is based on satellite and this is height based on the field measurement and we can see the 3D model here of course here is not like steeply deep like this because this is we only like assume the crust thickness so the thickness in the channel uh, the height of the channel should be like same level as the crust but this is uh, the, the crust is already cool so they make like this but the channel is not cooling enough so it's like have it deep like this but this is the 3D crust model again from the September 6th so if we plot temperature versus distance from fan, if we follow the uh, flow, the channel, the temperature is decreased 
as uh, far away from the fan and from crust thickness if we if the distance from the fan is far away so the crust thickness is increasing so here uh, I want to discuss the effect on edge on radiant flux that we know we have uh, uh, underestimate of the radiant flux which is uh, we had uh, around 8 gigawatt but in other research can up to 25 gigawatt what happened if we uh, change the edge factor or the roughness uh, factor so edge uh, equal to 1 it's mean like uh, it's completely smooth surface so sorry so if if we put H1, we get uh, 25 gigawatt in the in the uh, radiant flux. If we decrease the roughness, we can have get lower and lower radiance here. Same like in uh, crust thickness. If we put edge uh, like smooth, we can get the thickness here. Underestimate from from the uh, real. Uh, measurement. So this clearly the edge is like influence the uh, measurement here. <coughs> so if we put the uh, edge higher, then the radiant flux will be higher also, but the uh, cross thickness will be lower. So this is discussion and conclusion in this part. TA is efficient in differentiating thermal domains within large active lava flow fields when the hotspot threshold uh, reaches zero po uh, more than 0 0.1. And differentiating thermal domains over a new possibility to derive sub-pixel temperature within thermal domain with variable TC setting. And the result indicate that active lava domain have a TH range around 900 until 1200C, which with TEI 0.51, more than 0.51, and then range for cross, hot cross from, from 400 until 900C, which TEI 0.2 until 0.51, and warm cross from 346 until 575C, which TEI from 0.1 until 0.2. So radiant flux and crust thickness uh, exhibit good agreement with the field observation and measurement and show that variation of age given effect to measurement that we need to consider this age precisely to get better estimating. So now we go through to the after the eruption. So this is still in preparation, the second paper about uh, I bought high press spectral remote sensing for mapping surface mineral and volcanic product at Colorado using SMCC method. So uh, the sixth one of eruption at Colorado featured the diverse surface structure and morphologies. So the abundant information of airborne hyperspectral imagery above the lava field calls for the use of time evasion and accurate method to unravel their signal. So the data, and in this uh, study, we, we have airborne hyperspectral data, which acquisition was acquired five months after the eruption, uh, like for September 2015, using airborne Phoenix hyperspectral sensor. It's operated by NERSH IRF. In this study, we subset the data to focus on the area around fan, around bubble crater in here which consider have more diverse surface here. And the data set contain 622 channels from 0 0.3 micrometer until 2.5 micrometer. With, we resemble to four meter pixel resolution. And the data were atmospheric corrected by quick atmospheric correction. So the, this is the data. We have uh, exactly eight lines here. This is the flight times, the altitude of the flight, and here's the result. So we subset the data to testing this, only this first in here, around the fan. So based on that, we 
proposed using the sequential maximum angle convex cone to extract the end member and abundant from here. So it's basically, if we have one pixel here, it's same um, principle as like in the thermal things. We, but in here we extract the spectral signal from the one pixel here. So uh, they in the end member also have the uh, pixel portion here, which is uh, say in the abundance. So as MSCC first find the brightest pixel in the image and then it finds the pixel most different from the brightest one. After that, uh, it finds pixel most different from first two. So the algorithm like repeating itself, after we finish with this, and then uh, try to get another signal, and get another signal, until, until the algorithm stop. This can be stopped because we put the, how many abundance we want. Oh, sorry. How many n member we want? In this case, we we put 15 n members. So that's why the algorithm here uh, try to find 15 n, n member here, which is randomly distributed in here. So the algorithm will find first with the n member that have brightness spectrum, which is in this case uh, the lava that's still uh, active, which is uh, saturated. In in sense of lava here. And then after we acquire the 15 end member, we divide this 15 end member, oh sorry, we group this 15 end member to six surface type. This is due to the shape of end member is fairly consistent or similar. So we decide to group the end member thing. So that end member is only different with the amplitude varies due to elimination condition. So let's see that this is the end member that we can call incandescent lava end member or hot surface hot surface end member. It contains end member one. As you can see, end member one is the like saturated pixel here, which is the brightest uh, end member here. So this end member is located in bright region in false color, which is present here. This is uh, this is. 0 until 1. This is 1, which means this covered by uh, highest uh, end member. So these white things, this is highest possibility of have that end member. So if we compare with the short wave infrared and, pulse and near infrared pulse color, we can see. Can you so this is the still in condensation of lava, still bright here, still hot, here, here, this is consistent with this N member also. So this is this is mean still in condensation of lava. And group number two, this is uh, N spectra of 3, 6, 8, and 12. It's represent an oxidized surface. So the, ex the oxidized surface N member have the highest abundance fraction around the fan, which is good agreement with the field observation. You can see this is in Malgur. This is already oxidized, and also this is in the fan here, 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 here around the pool. Channel. This is, we have a photo of the crater, which is the location here, here, here. This is uh, done by Rob and Kate during field campaign in August 2015. Here, you can see this is uh, uh, the surface already oxidized. Here, which this is clear in this uh, abundance that have a uh, highest uh, possibility of uh, oxidized surface here. And the next, the group of the sulfate mineral, which contains N member 2, 7, 11, and 15. So the sulfate mineral and member height has the highest concentration fraction around the lava pool with a white surface color and are also found in small fraction around the fan. Most pixels are described by a small subset and the spectra. This is the sulfate mineral. Here the, the highest possibility to have a sulfate mineral. 
where if we compare with the true color here, this is the white patch here, which uh, we don't have uh, uh, until now. We don't have the ground truth about this, but we assume this is uh, sulfate mineral still. But we need to find out. And N spectra number fourteen represent water. This N member has the highest abundance fraction around the river, and I have a small fraction around the lava field. You can see this is river have a highest abundance here. We have a small fraction there, and we have N member spectra nine as a noise that is present in the spectra due to corrupted band. Here's the noise. Mostly this is kind of noise that we get. So this is uh, the true color of Phoenix airborne hyperspectral. If we put color composite of the abundance, we could get green. Like this is oxidized sur surface, and the green one is sulfate minerals. So if we have like yellow color, this like might be mixing between oxidized sul sulfate and background. Like that. This is if we integrate with LiDAR, and this is the distribution of oxidized surface of that mineral. And so this is in total we acquire 15 spectral end member. So, uh, but not acquire is like we define 15 end member because algorithm should be find 15 and their abundance. The first end member was chosen as the bright spectrum, which we Present saturated lava. We group this 15 end member into six surface type, which is like lava, decadescent lava, oxidized surface, sulfate mineral, water, and noise. Due to the shape of end member is similar between each other. So the end member represent pure surface material in a hyperspectral image. So the SMCC methods offer fast characterization of end member for the volcanic phenomena. However, ground truth spectra will be recommended for further analysis. So we have also limitation here. Why we only we, we only subset into the specific area because the data is too big. No. And also we resemble to four meters. Where in in the first term we, we want to have in one meter, but data is like going up to five hundred gigabyte. So we we still uh, figure out how to deal with this computation process and this big data. So this is uh, our current progress and future work. We have developed thermal